Microwaves are electromagnetic radiation with an oscillating electric and magnetic field. Heat is produced when the microwaves are absorbed into the tissue and is mainly the result of two processes. Electric dipoles, for example water molecules, oscillating in the field. Electric carriers, for example ions, moving back and forth in the field. The delivery device of the heat to the tissue is the microwave antenna. Different antenna designs have different radiation patterns and therefore produce different heat distributions within the tissue. In transurethral microwave thermotherapy, it is desirable to have an ellipsoid radiation pattern with low backward heating in order to protect the external sphincter from excessive heat, while the upper part of the prostate and the bladder neck are exposed to high temperatures. The helix dipole antenna is a unique antenna used in the core therm device to achieve those goals. Therapeutic temperatures are distributed in a funnel-like shape with a radiation of 15 millimeters at the prostate base, diminishing towards the apex. It is important to understand that the location of the antenna in the body is crucial in order to perform a safe and efficient treatment. An altered antenna position will move the heat distribution and may result in irreversible tissue damage. Place the core therm control unit at a position where all probes and connectors can easily reach between the control unit and the patient and where the control unit can be connected to the nearest convenient electrical supply. Lock the wheels of the control unit so that it is stationary. Connect the core therm to the nearest convenient electrical supply. Ensure that the laptop computer is positioned firmly on the docking device of the control unit. Press the main power switch on the right side of the core therm control unit. Switch on the computer by pressing the on-off switch. When the unit is switched on, the PLFT icon appears on the desktop. The treatment program is started. The on-off button can be differently placed in different computer models. Insert the disinfected microwave antenna into the PLFT catheter and secure the antenna in the PLFT catheter by turning the locking nut in the clockwise direction. Do not lubricate the antenna. Insert the sterile intraprostatic temperature probe fully into the PLFT catheter and check the position of the exit. Then withdraw the probe so that its tip is visible but not protruding from the catheter. Do not secure the probe to the PLFT catheter yet. Fill the circulation system with 75 milliliters of sterile water from a sterile syringe. Use the valves to evacuate excess air so that the bag lies flat on the heat exchange plate of the control unit. Introduce the PLFT catheter into the urethra with the tip of the catheter directed upward. Insert the PLFT catheter all the way into the bladder in a similar manner to the insertion of a standard catheter. When the PLFT catheter is fully inserted, fill the balloon slowly with exactly 20 milliliters of sterile water from a sterile syringe. Do not fill the balloon until the catheter is inserted in the bladder. Gently withdraw the PLFT catheter until it meets the bladder neck and is then secured in place. Carefully stretch the PLFT catheter and insert the intraprostatic temperature probe into the prostate. Advise the patient that he may experience a slight pricking sensation. When it is fully inserted, secure the intraprostatic temperature probe in the PLFT catheter by turning the lock nut of the probe connector in the clockwise direction. Position the patient to receive the rectal temperature probe. He can remain in the supine position with one leg drawn up. Cover the rectal temperature probe with a condom and apply lubricant gel to the outer surface of the condom. Then, with the handle of the probe pointing vertically upward, carefully introduce the probe into the rectum. Place a rolled up hand towel under the patient to prevent ejection of the rectal temperature probe when the patient is laid flat. Place the penis safety probe around the base of the penis with the temperature sensor against the urethra and at the penoscrotal angle beneath the penis. Fasten the strap. 
The probes can now be connected to the core therm control unit. Note that the PLFT catheter, the temperature probes, and the microwave antenna must be prepared and inserted into the patient before being connected to core therm. Slide the access cover of the pump to the right. Place the water reservoir on the heat exchanger plate in the pull-out drawer. Thread the water tube around the pump and allow the access cover to shut. Connect the intraprostatic temperature probe to the green socket of the pull-out drawer. A click will be heard when the connection is properly made. Connect the microwave antenna to the BNC socket on the left side of the control unit. Rotate the connector by 90 degrees to lock it in place. Connect the rectal temperature probe to the blue socket of the pull-out drawer. Connect the safety probe to the gray socket of the pull-out drawer. The PLFT session can now begin. When all preparations of the patient and the device are complete, click on Continue and confirm all the registered information before the treatment page is opened. When the treatment page is opened, the pump starts and the temperatures on the screen are shown. Before starting the treatment, check that the patient's temperatures displayed on the treatment page are normal. Typical temperatures are intraprostatic temperature 35 degrees centigrade to 37 degrees centigrade, rectal temperature 35 degrees centigrade to 37 degrees centigrade, penis safety temperature 28 degrees centigrade to 35 degrees centigrade. If any of the displayed temperatures deviate from the expected values, check the position of the probes. If the problem remains unresolved, the probe in question needs to be calibrated. Exchange the probe and calibrate it before using it again. The treatment is started by clicking Start and activating the microwave effect. The essential treatment strategy is to reach therapeutic temperature, approximately 55 degrees centigrade, with the least possible microwave power level and shortest time. The microwave effect is changed by clicking on the arrows in the field power, 2 watts. Start the treatment at 20 to 40 watts. The IP temperature gradually increases while it takes some time for the blood flow to decrease. Gradual raising of the microwave power follows until the IP temperature has reached therapeutic levels around 55 degrees centigrade. Rectal temperature also rises, but normally stabilizes around 41 degrees centigrade. A strong temperature increase in the prostate or in the rectum can mean that the microwave power should be decreased. The reflection needs to be stabilized from time to time. This is done through activating the stub tuner. Thereafter, you are asked if you prefer to make a manual or a semi-automatic adjustment. Manual adjustment is performed by clicking on the small buttons. The reflection should be decreased so that the value is below 1 watt. The calculated cell kill achieved during the PLFT session is shown by the calculated cell kill graph. The calculated cell kill value is the center value of the graph. When cell kill has reached 15 to 30 percent, depending on the size of the prostate gland, the treatment is stopped by pushing stop. The treatment time can vary from 15 minutes to a maximum of 70 minutes, depending on what temperatures are reached in the prostate, which in turn depends on the blood flow in the prostate tissue. Switching off the core therm. Exit the software by using the quit command in the PLFT menu. If you wish to print the treatment, stay on the page Patient List until the patient has been taken care of. Switch off the computer by selecting Shut Down from the Windows Start menu. Set the main power switch on the right side of the control unit to the Off position. When the treatment session has finished, the clinical equipment can be disconnected from the core therm control unit and removed from the patient. Disconnecting the probes from the core therm and removing the probes from the patient. 1. Remove the penis safety probe. 
2. Carefully withdraw the rectal temperature probe from the patient. 3. Release the intraprostatic temperature probe from the PLFT catheter by turning its lock nut. Then carefully withdraw the probe until it is entirely inside the catheter. 4. Drain the water from the balloon of the PLFT catheter. Then gently remove the catheter from the patient's urethra. When the catheter is withdrawn, it is quite normal for the patient to experience some bleeding from the urethra due to abrasions caused by the temperature probe. No particular measures are necessary. The bleeding should cease spontaneously after approximately 10 minutes. 5. Unlock the microwave antenna from the PLFT catheter by gently turning the lure lock in the antenna in the counterclockwise direction. Withdraw the microwave antenna from the PLFT catheter. Immediately after the PLFT catheter has been removed, the patient should be fitted with an indwelling catheter. When fitting the catheter, it is not unusual for a quantity of coagulum and blood-stained urine to be discharged. In this event, you may consider flushing the bladder. The catheter should be plugged. The patient should be prescribed bladder training from the outset. There are two reasons for this. Urine counteracts the formation of coagulum due to the fibrinolytic effect of urine, and the patient will feel less discomfort if the balloon and tip of the catheter are surrounded by urine. It is important to encourage the patient to drink copious amounts of water after the treatment. The PLFT catheter is intended for use in one treatment only. It must be discarded after use. The intraprostatic temperature probe must be cleaned and sterilized before it is used for another treatment session. The microwave antenna, the rectal temperature probe, and the penis safety probe must be cleaned and disinfected before they are used for another treatment session.